Hello everyone and welcome to episode 11 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, going to bring you more stratospheric data. We're going to go through the current situation at 10 HPA over the Arctic and all part. We're going to have a look at forecast data and we're going to look at a historic winter from the past. This week we're looking at, uh, well we're going to look at two actually. We're going to look at 1940 and also 1940, 1941. We could do three, but we're going to say third one until uh, next week. It's like one and a half. We're only doing like January and February 1940. We can't do December 1939. And I'll explain all of that uh, later on in the video. But we're going to go through like forecast data first of all. Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks to everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about guys. Well, get to subscribe to show everyone for uh, doing it that we're going to be live at 6 p.m we get 10 to 14 there so i shall see you live uh, a little bit later on right let's start off with the current situation at 10 hpa the stratosphere over the arctic amador pub is coming from the jma oh hang on got, got to get me highlight uh, i did it i bet my computer my pc did a windows update last night <laughs> uh unbeknownst to me i got up this morning and you know it had uh, gone through a full shutdown and whatnot and nothing's working <laughs> uh nothing's been working i've had to sort out the mic i've had to sort out uh headphones and all sorts so uh thanks thanks microsoft and they didn't even let me know actually normally you'd like get um a notification don't you, to tell you but it's going to be getting an update at some point um well i didn't get that so <laughs> thanks ms anyway i've got to fill a bit of time now until my highlighter gets up how are we all doing today but <laughs> big big dull again isn't it bit cloudy um what else can we talk about oh what about what about politics no we haven't got onto that have we right let's uh get back down right here we go then filled a bit of time there didn't i okay so back to business this is how uh temperatures are currently looking at 10 hp over the arctic and all pole versus uh average so the black line is where temperatures currently are at 10 hp the gray line is the trend line so at this point of the year um, sort of getting into the middle of February. We should be around minus 55 at 10 hate pay. We're currently about minus 65, so about 10 degrees or so uh, below average. However, we are seeing that black line starting to tick up. We reach our coldest point around the turn of about at minus 18 so we now, uh, we've now lifted the temperature up by about 15 degrees. So a bit of a warming taking place at uh, 10 HP, but still colder than normal. If we go a bit lower down to uh, 30 HPA, well, there we are still very substantially cold now. We actually got close to minus 90 there around the turn of the month. We're still under minus 80. We're about minus 82, minus 83 at this point of the year. We should be somewhere about minus 67, something like that. So uh, we're still very, very substantially carbon average at 30 HP, which of course is lower down and closer to the uh, troposphere. And you see, all through this winter, um, temperature has been colder than average. So we start off back in November, not too far from average, but about not of uh, end of November, beginning of December, uh, we saw uh, the temperature getting cold on average, and that's where we stay throughout the entirety of the winter. Really. So uh, temperature has been very cold at both um, 30 and also at 10 HPA throughout this winter. Not as cold to average at 10 HPA as we see at 30 HPA, but generally always trending uh, below normal. And that explains why I have seen a very strong polar vortex, or at least a stratospheric polar vortex this season. Okay, well, let's have a look at the latest GFS temperature forecast. So, the blue and purple colours beat up cold temperatures at 10 HPA over the Arctic of North Pole. Bit of a displacement event of the Saturday polar vortex into the North Atlantic, Greenland, northern parts of Europe. Warming over on the Pacific and Siberian side of the uh, Arctic has penetrated towards the pole and lifted the temperature up somewhat. So, as I said, we're now hovering about minus 55 over the top. 
bowl itself. Well, let's run through and see what this GFS run does. So that one's going to fizzle out, and the cold temps are basically going to be maintained at 10 HPA for the next week or so. Stratospheric polar vortex continues. In the more extended range, quite a significant warming occurring over the North Atlantic there around day 10, pushing into Northern Europe, but eventually moving around the Russian started heading towards uh, the North Pole itself. <coughs> So, sorry, everyone, that continues the displacement of the satellite polar vortex into the North Atlantic and Northern Europe. The PV bear becoming very, very stretched by the last day of February, but still in business. So, we predicted in the Gals Weather, Gals Weather's winter forecast that this would be a winter without a uh, SSW. Probably, uh, you know, we would not have a, uh, um, an SSW during winter this year. If the GFS is right, then that is indeed going to be the case. However... Just beyond that, until the beginning of March, I've got a feeling this will probably split the vortex because it looks so stretched. And, um, you know, I think we will get an SS3, but I think it's going to happen into uh, the beginning of March, most likely. This is from the East WF. This is the 10 HPA temperature uh, weekly anomaly forecast. So you see these bright um, uh, uh, salmon pink colours here over the Atlantic, Northern Europe. That's the current one we've just been looking at. This is for week one, 17th to 24th February next week. Now, as we go over to week two we find that that warming actually intensifies uh, a little bit and moves up in towards uh, Russia as well. Uh, that's going to be the 24th of February to the 3rd of March. Week 3 then takes it around and moves it into the pole itself. That looks quite significant, I say. I have to say that's the 3rd to the 10th of uh, March. 10th to the 17th of March, that warming is maintained. It's right over top of the poles, but that's two weeks of significantly above average temperature anomalies there. And still continuing to the 17th, 24th March. I reckon this is going to be BSSW and it's going to happen. It's going to be SSW, you know, of, of season, but it's going to happen in early March. Can't say guaranteed it's SSW because on the temperature scale, uh, we're going to have to get to the brightest colour there, which is like that yellow colour. Um, uh, we'll see, but it's a strong signal uh, for light being uh, three or four weeks away. So I think that that's it. And if we have a look at being that uh, mean zone of wind for um, extended range forecast at 10 HPA, you can see a significant uh, weakening of the zone of wind is predicted now as we go into March. So we've already seen a bit of a weakening back closer to average courtesy of the current displacement event, but very quickly, the zone of wind is going to power back up again as we go uh, through the remainder of February. However, we get to the end of February, just here, and the start of March, and we see this thick blue line, which is a bit difficult to make out. We should change colour on that, make it white or something. But anyway, we see this thick blue line very... Um, dramatically really uh, dropping away throughout the month of March. We have many ensemble blue members now that are going for a reversal of zone wings. Oops, my light went wonky. <laughs> Try and draw that straight again. Uh, we have many ensemble blue members that are going for a reversal of zone wings uh, now through the second and the third week of March. All of those are down there. Uh, that's a technical SSW. I believe we're thinking this is like cyclical. It's not because like the cyclical end of the uh, SPV always happens later on. That will that would happen, you know, into April or even early May sometimes. So this is not like the cyclical end of the uh, SPV due to the uh, just the, the, the cyclical warming of the Northern Hemisphere. This, I think, is a sudden stratospheric warming event that is going to occur through the month of uh, March. I think the evidence for that is gathering. Well, yeah, basically wobbling about low places always does, but I would stick with the ECM. And I think the uh, ECM extended forecast here is looking uh, pretty bullish for a sudden stratospheric warming event to be occurring through March. The impacts of that, well, if the SSW happens like in the first week of March, the impact's likely to be around the middle of the month. If the SSW, looks more likely the SSW happens around the middle um, uh, of March, like second to the third week of March there. Um, now, if that happens, uh, then it's likely to be sort of late March and probably into early April that the impacts can be expected. Impacts likely to 
been increased in uh, northern blocking and uh, colder weather in the northern hemisphere. Of course, we can't ne necessarily say where that northern blocking will be. Who will get the colder weather from that? But uh, I think there is probably going to be quite a significant cold snap at some point across northern Europe during the uh, first half of this uh, spring if this SSW during uh, the first to middle part of March comes off. So we shall keep you posted and we shall keep you updated. So 12 of watch will be released next week. Now, uh, historic data. So uh, we can only go back with these charts as far as the 1st of January 1940. So the first winter we're going to look at is winter of 1939, 1940. But annoyingly, we can't look at December 1939. It looks like something very significant happened with the stratosphere in December uh, 1939. Uh, because this is the chart for New Year's Day 1940. You can see how the polar vortex is basically out of business. It, it looks like it's been split as well. I think we've had a split of the stratospheric polar vortex with a load of blue here into the North Atlantic and North America and another lot over towards um, Russia and whatnot. So I think there's been a technical SSW that has occurred during December 1939, but unfortunately, with a split there, but unfortunately we can't, uh, you know, we can't show you that. But I think that explains why January 1940 was such a bitterly cold month. January 1940 has a central temperature of minus 1.4, I think. It's the first sub-zero CET month since February 1895. There was a 45-year run without a sub-zero CET month any month um, from February 1895 to January 1940. That's longer than the, the, the run we've had, you know, in, in the last sort of um, few decades, actually, because we had a run from February 86 to December 2010 um, without a sub zero CT month. We've not had a sub zero CT month since then, but of course, we're only like um, 15 years on from that. So it's it was the first um, sub zero CT month since. Um, since, uh, uh, since 1895, and it was the first sub-zero CT January since 1881, so it had been a long, long time since it had a sub-zero CT January when we got to 1940, and I think there was an SSW in uh, December 1939 that kicked it off, but unfortunately we can't show you that. Well, we go through another 10 days, so let's go through the 10th of January 1940, where we see colder temperatures uh, beginning to reform in the North Atlantic and into Northern Europe as well, uh, but of course the damage from um, the SSW that I think happened in uh, December of 1939 uh, has, has been done. So the polar vortex is reforming here as we're going through January, or Saturday polar vortex is reforming here as we're going through uh, January 1940. Uh, however, in the tropospheric level, we have got huge amounts of dormant blocking producing this extremely cold sub-zero since January, very slow January as well. Notice another warming started to occur there in the stratosphere over northern Europe. Are we going to get a second SSW? Let's go on uh, a few more days. So, no, we don't actually. We just see the stratospheric polar vortex beginning to uh, get increasingly um, reformed and, and, and getting its act together there over the uh, North Pole. And then we go to the end of January 1940 from a stratospheric point of view. And uh, the polar vortex, or a stratospheric polar vortex, one and truly back in business. Now, February 1940 was a cold month, and there was regular wintry outbreaks, but not as cold, of course, as the uh, extremely cold and uh, very wintry January. That's the 5th of February. Again, another warming trying to do about uh, through uh, southern and also eastern parts of uh, Europe. Then, Valentine's Day 1940, looking like that. Um, I don't think we're going to get another warm within the winter anyway so that gets to the end of February 1940 so the interest is in December 39 and we can't really show you that however the next winter on was another very cold January not quite as cold as 1940 but it did have um, a century in temperature of plus zero point something so let's have a look at the winter of 1940 1941 from a stratosphere 
correct point of view. Back December the 1st, uh, 1914. Oh, again, we've got those uh, blue colours, uh, you know, which are, which is satisfied, part of Vortex, well and truly entrenched. That is the 8th of December. Again, satisfied, part of Vortex, well and truly in business there. 16th of December uh, looks like that. And there we go on, let's go on to Christmas Day. Of 1940. Uh, a bit of a warming happening over the far eastern portion of Siberia and whatnot, but basically the stratospheric polar vortex is still well and truly entrenched and ingrained. That's New Year's Eve 1940, so I'd look more interesting. So uh, we're beginning to get a uh, significant warming for stratosphere occurring over Russia and Siberia there. Uh, not impacting the uh, stratospheric polar vortex in the Arctic at this point. Let's go on to uh, January 1941. Is this going to be triggered? Uh, it's cold. January is going to be triggered by an uh, SSW. Well, that does look very, very SSW-esque, doesn't it? In, uh, hang, hang on. Yeah, that's January 1st. So that looks very SSW-esque, doesn't it? Over Russia. Bright red. Dramatic red colour there. Uh, appearing. Let's go on to the 4th of January. Uh, uh, yeah, this is an SSW show, Bill. So, both the winter of 1939 1940, but we can't show you it, but I think winter of 1939 1940 was triggered, was started by an SSW. And then the second very cold January, cold winter on, uh, which is 40 41, that also triggered by an SSW. It does have quite a mildish February, though, in uh, 1941. Anyway, Dramatic SSW is occurring there. I think the zone winds would have gone into uh, reverse. That is the uh, 6th of January. So we haven't split the PB, but we have reduced it very, very substantially and significantly displaced it in towards North America. Uh, another warming is actually starting to occur, occur through the North Atlantic there. Let's go on a couple more days to the 9th. And again, we see very significant warming of the stratosphere through the pole into the Atlantic as well. Still, though, the polar vortex just about clinging on by its fingertips in the stratospheric level. Uh, that is the 12th of January. Uh, repeated warming goes on. But... <coughs> 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 So, sorry, everyone, but still not quite able to kill off, not quite able to split the uh, stratospheric polar vortex, which is clinging on by its fingertips there uh, across northern parts of Europe. But uh, over the pole itself, well, obviously, zone of winds have been in reverse for a significant amount of time by this point, and still the warming of the stratosphere is continuing to the middle of January as well. Look how, <laughs> how weak and shrunk the stratospheric polar vortex is uh, looking there. 19th of January, warming maintained over northern Europe and in towards uh, Russia. But notice the blue curve, stratospheric polar vortex, beginning to reform over Canada. So they just weren't quite knocked out, were they, in uh, this winter? We didn't quite see the end of them. But sustained and repeated warming throughout the month of January 1941 over the pole, pole itself explains why there was such strong uh, northern blocking again, and a bitterly cold weather across northern Europe through this, uh, you know, through this uh, particular January. Getting towards the end of January uh, now, and the Stratford Polar Vortex really does look as though it's uh, it's done for there, actually. But still, just about some sort of legacy of it, I guess, over uh, Canada. And then we go on to February 1941. And don't we look like that? And then let's go on a bit further. That's the 8th of February. I say February 1941 is quite a mild month, though, or a milder month, anyway, uh, across, uh, well, for the century temperature, anyway, it was a milder uh, but so I assume the car perhaps shifted into North America uh, or something. Um, that's how uh, Valentine's Day 41 is looking. And then the 20th of February 1941 looks like that. Another, another warming is trying to get going over Russia. Very, very strange winter this with these repeated uh, warnings of a strategy. And that's how we aimed up in 1941. Now, it was actually another... Uh, very cold uh, winter for 41 42. That was a trilogy of cold winters 39 40, 40 41, and then 41 40, 42. Um, 1940. 
142 actually has a very cold January again with a CT in the plus zeros. Also has a very cold February though. Uh, not quite a sub-zero CT February, but both January and February 942 were cold. We'll have a look, have a look next week at uh, that winter from a stratospheric point of view, and then we've done the trilogy of the winters, minus December 19.9, which I would have liked to show you, but I, I wasn't able to. Right, okay, well, that's it for episode 11, or, no, episode, yeah, what are we up to? Episode 10, episode 11, I like to lose count. Anyway, that's it for, <laughs> that's it for Stratwatch uh, for uh, this week. Uh, we'll do it all over again. It's episode 11, isn't it? That's it for episode 11 of Stratwatch. We'll do it all over again um, next week. We're going to be back at 6pm this evening, with the 10 to 14 day out. Live, I shall see you uh, later on then for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching